So what would the sort of principles or tenets or characteristics of a, of a genuinely integral spirituality be? Again, integral spirituality is, is just emerging now. So right. it's premature for anybody uh, to be able to say, this is what it is, right? Um, but nevertheless, we can see some new shoots emerging. And, um, mm-hmm. and so one of the things that, um, that, that integral spirituality can do is, first of all, it, it can step outside of progressive spirituality. It can step outside of the postmodern worldview and see it from the outside as well as from the inside. And it can recognize that um, there are uh, there are values of of postmodernism which are uh, again evolutionary scaffolding that that is it helped the postmodern worldview to be born the postmodern worldview in order to be born it had to push off against modernism but that anti modern uh, uh, sort of died in the wool aspect of of um, progressive spirituality, uh, I think, is is now and in some ways a handicap because it is it, it, it it's it's in this um, it's in this way it's rejecting modernism and of course to the extent that it's rejecting modernism it's not going to be able to be effective at leading modernism forward towards uh, you know a more um, harmonious civilization one that's more uh, environmentally. Um, uh, conscious uh, as as one example, <clears throat> and that's a good example. You know, politically, um, the environmental movement, which is closely related to progressive spirituality, m- you know, many environmentalists are also have been brought to that perspective of recognizing the the the, uh, the sacredness of the earth, etc., through forms of progressive spirituality. And uh, uh, many of us, of course, uh, are are very passionately committed toward um, helping um, uh, overcome uh, global warming and environmental degradation of all kinds. But politically, uh, we find that, that so much of the environmental movement um, is, 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 is impotent. It has a hard time um, um, gaining control of, of the levers of power, if you will, to try to, um, to constrain the modernist economy. And that's because uh, it, it's, it's in this position of antithesis, because it's so anti-modern. And, and this shows up in, in subtle ways, right? There are plenty of people who who, uh, who are environmentalists who say, yeah, of course we can't just uh, go backwards and go to an agrarian society because there are six billion people on the planet, and, and uh, we can't just sort of uh, um, jump outside of history. We have to kind of be part of it. But I think in the env- environmentalism politically would have much more power if its culture could recognize um, the anti-modern elements of itself and purge those elements in a way, uh, you know, that was by cultural agreement. Again, this is by leadership. People have to stand up and say, uh, you know, modernism isn't all bad. You've got to be able to recognize um, the evolution of it and, and see it not just for its pathologies, but also for its incredible gifts, um, you know, and, and the ways that it's pulled us forward. So one of the things that that um, integral spirituality can do is help clarify our values uh, regarding the evolution of consciousness, right? In other words, verticality, uh, the, the fact that, that consciousness evolves and that some forms of consciousness are, are sort of more forward in history than others uh, is something that the postmodern worldview has a, a lot of problems with, right? Um, one of the problems is that uh, we, we've got legacies from the past which we're still trying to push off against, one legacy of the past was the teaching of traditional Western spirituality that, quote, man had dominion over nature. And so that there was this sort of nature was seen as just instrumentally valuable. It didn't have any intrinsic value, and we could just use it for our own purposes because humans were the only ones that counted. Well, of course, that was an element of uh, – uh, that was a traditional uh, form of spiritual teaching, which we can now see is, is pathological in our time, and we want to we want to say no. All of nature is valuable, and animals and plants and you know the planet as a whole has tremendous intrinsic value, which we uh, we need to to recognize and hold sacred. So of course, you know that that it's natural that postmodernism rejected that, but in rejecting that. Um, the pathology that goes with it. Again, you, every step of progress has pathology that goes with it, and the pathology that goes with that is this uh, value relativism, right? Where we, we right. nobody can say that anything's better than anything else, right? Nothing's more evolved than anything else, and, and humans are no more valuable than uh, than than any f- other form of life. And uh, while uh, you know the, the, every form of life has intrinsic value, again, we're not trying to go to the extremes. 
But to say that uh, that humans are no more valuable than bacteria, I think is clearly uh, that the sort of there's something wrong with that at the deep level of our basic moral intuition. So being able to to get clear about verticality um, in evolution, the, 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 that that humans do represent an emergence of value, which in some ways. Uh, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a transcendence of the biosphere. We, we include the biosphere in our transcendence, um, and, and you know, the biosphere is more fundamental, but we're more significant. Right? That, that's another element of, uh, of value recognition, um, this difference between um, fundamental value, which runs in one direction, and intrinsic value or significance value, which runs in another.